When something terrible happens to someone that you love, chances are that it hurts you. This is the expected response. It's the response that most people would have. But what happens when you're a suspect when police start investigating what happened to that loved one? And what happens if they're wrong? My name is Brienne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the lost children of the Alleghenies, two young boys who disappeared into the forest and were considered a completely standard tragedy until accusations started falling on their parents and neighbors. Yeah, this one is a little messy, I'll admit. In 1856, there were two young boys named Joseph and George Cox. They were five years old and seven years old at the time. And by all accounts, there was nothing strange going on around them. But one day, something weird happened. The family dog was throwing a fit, causing their father to grab his gun and go confront whatever wild animal had set them off. When he walked back to the house, Joseph and George were nowhere to be found. For completely understandable reasons, their father thought that this was pretty strange. But what was even more strange was that they never returned. Their parents waited, but... They didn't come back. They waited some more. No boys. They were just gone. The parents looked for the boys, assuming that they would find them making trouble nearby, but they didn't. No matter where they looked, their children were gone. And when the boys didn't show up at all, their parents began to get worried. Really worried. They told their neighbors, begging them to help, and they did. A huge search party was formed. People were walking through the forest well into the night, torches in hand, but the boys were nowhere to be found. People were expecting to find the boys dead or alive, but when they didn't find even a trace of them, they began to wonder what happened. Eventually, their searches led them to a river, and this was a turning point for the investigation. These people had covered a lot of land, so when they reached this river, which was absolutely raging because of the snowmelt, they knew there was no way that the boys had crossed it. Since they hadn't found them, they decided that the boys must have drowned in the river or possibly been dragged off by animals. They gave up the search, at least for a while, because the weather was so bad that they knew there was no way that the boys were still alive if they were lost in the forest. With the cold, the lack of evidence, and the raging river, they assumed that the boys must have died. Now, they weren't trying to save lives anymore. They were trying to recover bodies. And frustration began to grow. I don't think we talk enough about how grief affects entire areas, at least not with a story like this. These boys went missing. Their neighbors looked for them, but they found nothing. And in finding nothing at all, they began to grow suspicious. Let's be honest for a minute. Statistics are not in favor of families. Husbands, wives, parents, even friends. When it comes down to it, a lot of the time when something bad happens to someone, they know the person that did it. I think we all sleep better at night not thinking about this, but it kind of is true. Sometimes the people that you love most do terrible, awful things. And this is what the town began to think. Was it possible that their parents killed them? 
and hid them? Now, you might ask yourself, why would the parents do this? Well, their neighbors actually had a reason for it. After all of these people spent time helping, searching, sharing their sympathy, and giving money to the grieving parents, they realized that it was possible that the family killed their kids to kind of get a free ride. Now, that's a pretty awful idea, right? But as awful as it is, it has happened. Sometimes people just suck. So, people began to point the finger at their parents, rumors running wild from neighbor to neighbor. People went wild looking for evidence on their property to prove that these two killed those kids. At least, until something else happened. See, their parents weren't the only suspicious characters. There was another guy that people accused. The guy who had a dream that led to their bodies. For obvious reasons, psychic dreams are a touchy subject. Outside of books and movies, no one gives too much credit to prophecies. On one hand, it is pretty amazing to think that someone might be able to divine these impossible answers through some sort of magic. It's definitely the world that I want to live in, believe me. But... The problem with this is that magic as a concept has commonly been used as a way to gain public attention and cheat people out of their money, especially back in the 1800s. So when a man came forward to say that he had a dream about where the boys were, people had some questions. Now, Before you think this is weird, you should know that the guy told everyone that he had hoped that he could find the kids, and then he said that he had a dream about exactly where they were. But he actually didn't think much of it at first. Until it happened again. And again. Now, I feel inclined to share that I have freakishly vivid dreams. This morning, I had a full-scale dystopian dream about being on the run from some sci-fi authority that wanted me dead. Basically, every piece of fiction that I've ever written is from some kind of insanely vivid dream, and I am no stranger to reoccurring dreams. It's just that my primary reoccurring dream is about witches sacrificing my childhood stuffed animals into a cauldron in the basement of the house that I lived in when I was, like, six years old. It's weird, sure, but it isn't location of dead kids weird, you know? So when he said this, people thought that he was crazy. And then they decided to humor him. And this man walked the searchers out to the bodies. The boys had made it well past the river that everyone said it was impossible to cross. And... This made the guy look pretty bad for obvious reasons. People began to assume that he was the killer and had taken them to the boys out of guilt. But when the doctors evaluated the kids, they made it clear that they died of exposure. And to this day, no one knows what truly happened. They don't know if the parents were involved, though it seems likely that they weren't. They don't know if the strange neighbor with the dream was involved, but they obviously thought it was weird. And as for the evidence gathered by people with a limited capacity for in-depth scientific research, they said the boys died naturally. But we really cannot confirm that. It's... Just that no one can explain how this man knew exactly where to find them. So, that is a little questionable. To this day, their true story remains a mystery. You can say that the boys wandered off for no reason and that a stranger led their neighbors to them. Or you can say that someone murdered these boys or led them to their death and 
got away with it. In truth, we may never know. So, if you want to discuss the childish urge to run off and get into trouble, the very real dangers of becoming disoriented in the woods, or the likelihood that someone close to you is a seriously questionable person, feel free to contact me on Twitter or Instagram using the tag at datpod. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.